Hello everyone, welcome to iQuanta. So, I had given you five quant questions in the series of last 60 days of CAT. I hope you have tried these questions. Now, let's check your solutions. Why x, x, y, z, w are natural numbers such that log x to the base y is equal to 3 by 2, log w to the base z is equal to 5 by 4, y minus z is equal to 9, what is the value of x minus w? So, to solve this, we need to know little basic of log that if you ever see that log a log b base a is equal to x, then what do we say? That a to the power x will be equal to b. Now, what do we have here? Log x base y is equal to 3 by 2 or we can say that x is equal to y to the power 3 by 2. But in the third point, it's given y minus z is equal to 9. So let's find y in terms of x. So x, it will be x to the power 2 by 3. Similarly, it's given that log w base z is equal to 5 by 4. Or we can say w will be equal to z to the power 5 by 4. Or z will be equal to w to the power 4 by 5. Now, we need to find the value of x minus w. What do we know? That y minus z is equal to 9. Can I say x to the power 2 by 3 minus w to the power 4 by 5 is equal to 9? And can I write it as x to the power 1 by 3 whole square minus w to the power 2 by 5 whole square is equal to 9? Now, x and y, w, both are natural numbers. Their difference here is uh, natural numbers. Can I say that x to the power 1 by 3, y to the power 2 by 5 will also be natural numbers? Now, we need to find two perfect squares where difference is 9. So, it's nothing but 25 and 16, right? 25 minus 16 is equal to 9. There is not any other possible combination. So, what we can say? x to the power 1 by 3 is equal to 25 or x is equal to uh, is equal to 5 because 25 is x to the power 1 by 3 square. So, this will be 5. x will be equal to 5 cube or 125. Similarly, w to the power 2 by 5 square is 16. We can say w to the power 2 by 5 is equal to 4 or w will be equal to 4 to the power 5 by 2 and that is nothing but 2 to the power 2 to the power 5 by 2 which is 2 to the power 5 and that is nothing but 32. So, the difference between x and w x minus w is 125 minus 32 which is equal to nothing but 25 plus 8 that is this 25 and 100 minus 7 is 93. So, answer for this question is 93. Then comes the next question which says there are 140 students in a school. The number of students who play cricket, football and hockey are 50, 80 and 70 respectively. The ratio of the number of students who play more than one of the three sports to the number of students who play all the three sports is 3 to 2. If uh, each student of the school plays at least one of the three sports, then how many students play exactly one of the three sports? Exactly one. So what do we have here? We have three group of people. One group is uh, for cricket and these are 50. Other group is for football and uh, this is 80. And then hockey and this is 70, right? Now, it says that each student of the school plays at least one of the three sports, means the number of students who play none of these sports is zero. So, number of students who play exactly one sport plus exactly two sports plus exactly three sports. This should be total number of students which is equal to 140. And then, Number of students who are playing cricket plus football plus hockey. If I add these three values, what are we getting? There will be repetition. Exactly one will be, com will be coming once. Exactly twice will be coming twice. And exactly three sports 
instruments will be coming thrice and that will be equal to sum of these three which is nothing but 200 right now it also says that the ratio of number of instruments who play more than one of the three sports more than one of the three sports means exactly two sports exactly three sports this is two number of instruments who play all the three sports x3 is equal to 3 is to 2 so if i take this 3x this will be equal to 2x x3 is equal to 2x if x2 is equal to x now equation 2 minus 1 what do we get we get x2 plus 2x3 is equal to 60 or x2 we can put x and this will be 2x into so 4x 60 or x is nothing but 12 if x is 12 what we can say x1 plus x plus 2x is equal to 140 or x1 is equal to 140 minus 3x which is equal to 36 so x1 will be equal to 104 so there are exactly 104 students out of these 140 students who are playing exactly one of these sports then comes the next question which says alloy a is made of lead and zinc mixed in the ratio 2 is to 3 alloy b is made of lead and zinc mixed in the ratio 4 is to 1 alloys a and b are mixed in the ratio of 2 is to 3 10 kg of this new alloy was replaced by 10 kg of another alloy containing zinc and iron in the ratio 41 is to 9. Zinc in the resultant alloy is 66.67%. Find the weight of the alloy A. So what do we have? If we talk about the zinc in alloy A, in alloy B, and then 2A plus 3B, and then let's say C, the this alloy which is being mixed later right so zinc will be in the alloy 1 2 is to 3 means 3 out of 5 means it will be 60 percent here in b it's uh, 1 out of 5 that is 20 percent so we are mixing them into 2a plus 3b ratio 2a is 120 3b is 60 so 180 by 5 this will be equal to 36 percent the zinc percentage is in the alloy mixed with A and B will be 36%. In C, zinc is 41 out of 50. That is equal to zinc and iron are in the ratio of 41 is to 9. So it will be nothing but 82%. Now if we are mixing these, if we are mixing these, we are getting the percentages of zinc 66.67%. Now 66.67% is not that useful uh, percentage value, right? So let's convert them into fraction. In fraction, 36% will be 9 upon 25, 82% will be 41 upon 50, and 66.6% .6 is 2 by 3. So basically, mixing these two, we are getting this, right? Now, what I will do, I will convert the denominator, same for everyone 25, 50, and 3. LCM is 150. So let's try to make the denominator 150 in all the cases. So this will be 54 upon 150. This will be 123 upon 150. And this will be 100 upon 150. Now it's easier to calculate. 123 minus 100 is 23. 100 minus 54 is 46. Denominator 50 will be cancelled out anyway. This is 1 is to 2. What is this 1 is to 2? This was a alloy taking A and B together, 2A plus 3B. And this was the alloy C. The ratio of those is 1 is to 2. Alloy C was taken as 10 kg. If this was 10, this must be 5. So initially, before removing this 10 kg, this A plus B was, means 2A plus 3B was 15 kg. The ratio is 2 is to 3, right? So A, this will be 2 out of 5 of 15 which is equal to 6 kgs and so our answer is option a here
Then comes the fourth question. A trader marks up the cost price of his commodities by 10% but sells them on a faulty balance that shows a weight of 1100 gram as 1 kg. Shows a weight of 1100 gram as 1 kg. Means he is giving 1100 gram but it shows only 1 kg. Means there is a loss here, right? Furthermore, he offers a discount of 10% to all his customers. To a loyal customer, he gives a further discount of 5%. If he sells commodities to 20 loyal and 10 non-loyal customers in a day, find his overall profit loss percentages for the day approximately. So for non-loyal customers, what will be his selling price upon cost price ratio? So total return upon total investment. In the first case, he marks up by 10%. So it will be 110 out of 100. Second case, he is giving 1100 instead of 1 kg. He is taking money for 1000 gram, but he is giving 1100 by mistake. Then he is providing 10% discount. That means 90 by 100. Instead of 100, he is taking only 90 rupees. So what is happening here? This will be cancelled out completely. We are getting this as a 9 by 10. Selling price upon cost price is 9 by 10. Means the ultimate discount. Ultimate discount here is equal to 10% for non-loyal customers. And for loyal customers, there is a further 5% discount. So we can take the successive of 10 and 5. The discount will be minus 10, minus 5, plus 10 into 5 upon 100 which is equal to minus 14.5%. This is the total discount for the loyal customers. Now there are 20 loyal customers and 10 non-loyal customers. Then what will be his overall profit or loss? So in this case, this discount of 10% is on his cost price. Means ultimately, this is a loss of 10%. And here it will be a loss of 14.5%. So overall, there will be loss. What will be that loss? Overall loss is equal to 20 and 10. 2 is to 1 ratio we can take. So 2 into 14.5 plus 1 into 10 divided by 2 plus 1. That is equal to 39 upon 3, which is 13%. So overall, there is a loss of 13%. So the answer is option B. Then comes question number 5. If there are 10 stations between station A and station B and the train has to stop at station number 3 but will not stop at station number 7, then how many ways are possible to cover the journey from A to B? We have A and we have station B. There are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 stations in between station number 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. The train has to stop at station 3 and train will not stop at station number 7. In rest of the station, it's up to you. You can stop at it station number 1 or you might not stop it. So we have two options for station 1. We have two options for station 2. But we have only one option for station 3 and uh, similarly we have two options for all of these but station 7 we have only one option that it will not stop there 2, 2 and 2. So total number of ways a person can travel from station A to station B is nothing but 2 to the power 8 which is equal to 250. And if you check the options, option D is the correct answer. So that was the end of this session. I hope you enjoyed solving these questions and got all the answers correct. Thank you. Mm -hmm.